Hello, welcome to a new episode of Composing with Bach and Cage. Today we're going to create a pattern using a cellular automata and then build a uh, Bach roll from that. Uh, first of all, we want to use a tool that I created to, to generate cellular automata, which I will make available. So let's give this uh, a color. Uh, so this is my tool and uh, it outputs a jitter matrix here which is a good way of visualizing what I'm doing so let's first see uh, what a cellular automata is it's a way of generating patterns based on simple rules decide a rule and then a length and a width of my matrix I can get different patterns this one in particular is not very interesting but we can get something like this The axiom would be my first generation, which then generates the rest. And in this case, it's just one point in the middle, but I can start with a different axiom, with a random axiom, and get uh, more complex um, results. And each rule will have different uh, behaviors. So uh, this one is a different one. So this is what we're going to work with. The way I'm using this is uh, the um, horizontal dimension is my time, while the vertical dimension is my pitch. We can use the white cells as onsets, and the pitch of it will be determined by how high on the vertical dimension that uh, cell is. So uh, let's look at what the, the Bach result for this, because it's actually done in Bach inside. So we can actually just attach a back print to it, trigger it again. I have a list of lists and each list corresponds to a, a column. So the first column, if I pick the first one, if I just do back slice and just slice the first one uh, to make it easier to read. That's my first uh, column. So it's all zeros except for the one in the middle, which is a one right here. So that will be my first time frame. I can create a Bach arithmetic series, uh, which we have seen, I believe, in the first tutorial. And then um, the number of items that the arithmetic series need to produce is equal to the length of this list. The, the length of this uh, will be the number of pitches that I'm using. So um, I can go ahead and flat the list and then uh, get the length of this list. Then I can uh, create an integer box. And then if I go in the inspector of this integer box, I can actually choose a MIDI output. And then I can just do a MIDI midi to frequency and that will be my starting point but it will also be my uh, step so uh the this is my fundamental frequency and uh it will also be my step to create a harmonic series i can go ahead and actually translate that this into midi sense so uh there is an object that is called frequency to midi cent to mc and now my values are in medicine and there are going to be microtones in here. Um, so we'll see how to deal with that uh, soon. So that was the easy part, building a pitch collection, which of course can be more complicated and we might go back to that at some point. But um, to do the rhythmic placement of these notes, we need to actually uh, do two different iterations of this um, list. Uh, so the list that is coming out of here is composed of uh, several sublists. Uh, in particular, there are 60 sublists because the width of this matrix is 60. And um, 
um, each uh, li uh, sublist is placed at a certain time frame and each sublist contains uh, information about notes on and off. To do iteration in Bach, we use a Bach eater. And um, what the Bach eater does is iterate through the list, but uh, the, by default, it will break it up into the smallest possible item, which is the uh, zeros and one that are coming out of here. Uh, so like that, which is not what we want. We want to keep the information for the um, time frame, uh, ju uh, not give it up just yet, and then go into the uh, sub list to fetch the, the pitch information. So to get the time information, we can uh, uh, first of all prevent the back eater to iterate through each one of these sub lists and uh, give it an argument a max depth one. Uh, if we use the back eater with the argument at max depth one, uh, the list will be broken into uh, sub lists, but the sub list will be not iterated through. Each one, each one of these sub lists is, is being output at different times. And, uh, and we will have some indexes here the middle, the middle outlet of the buck eater is the uh, index of the um, iterated list. So uh, as you can see, I have indexes from one to 60 and each one of these is my um, one of the sub lists. First, a one, the first item, and that's my first time frame. Then the second. So this will be my time placement for my notes. So this will be my tempo in milliseconds, of course. What this will output is a list from which I have to pick a, a pitch. So uh, I have to go through another iteration uh, to do that picking process. So uh, I, this, in this case, I don't need to, I don't need to actually use the argument at max depth one, because I do want to iterate through the sub list and get the zeros and the ones. And I, as I said, when I get a zero, uh, there is no note that needs to be uh, uh, generated. Well, if it's a one, will we generate a note and the, which note will be determined by the placement of that one within that list. So um, since I'm going to use some max objects here, uh, I want to go back to a max uh, message uh, syntax. And so I'm going to use actually select one because that's my note on. I'm going to use a integer holder. So this will be placed there. And whenever I get a one, this will uh, be triggered. Uh, this integer will be output. It will be output to uh, select uh, something from a list. A list. So just like uh, we have the ZL lookup in Max, we have a Bach lookup in, in, in Bach. Um, there is an object that it's called collect. For each time frame, it, there will be a second iteration here that will select only the ones and will pick only the notes that are corresponding to the in the iteration index of the second iteration and then we'll collect them, meaning place them in a one list. I want that list to be output only when each iteration is done. So I'm going to send a bang to the collect whenever I'm done uh, with that particular time frame. So now I have for each time frame. I have a list of pitches and you can see at the beginning 
there is only one pitch right there. The first one is only one pitch, then I have two. And then the, the list starts growing based on the cellular automata pattern. So this is uh, all good for my pitch and uh, I can actually collect this list into another uh, bigger list, which will be my final output for my um, back roll. And um, also I want that to be into a list because each voice information in terms of midi sense, in terms of durations and velocities, will have to be contained in one list. Uh, and so this part here, meaning the, um, the time placement is still to be dealt with, but that's pretty easy because um, that's gonna be just one list of onsets. My back roll is built by uh, sending a list of onsets here, onsets, and then a list of um, sends there. And that's my list of sends. When everything is done, send a bang to the pitch list and then to the onset list and finally build the uh, back roll. That's my cellular automata, uh, which looks pretty busy. The Easy MIDI Play supports uh, different tone divisions and since we are go using microtones here, then we might as well hear them. And uh, so if I just do a eight tone division uh, for the Easy MIDI Play and then play this,